Today, I'm going to be bringing you my guide on how you can crush the Mysterium and get the most amount of rewards here in Infinity Kingdom. What's going on guys? Cheers. We haven't heard that intro music in a while, huh? Guys, the Mysterium refreshes every two days here in Infinity Kingdom, and if you're not doing this free event, you're missing out on a ton of free gold, mortal fragments, resources, speed ups, all that stuff, and it's actually a really fun game mode to play. Now, really quick before we jump into it, guys, there's a link in the description to download Infinity Kingdom absolutely for free. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while and you've seen these Infinity Kingdom videos and you haven't given the game a try, just yet right now is the best time to give the game a try so click that link in the description below i've been playing this game for months i enjoyed a ton and guys a lot of you've been asking me what server do i play on i play on norheim 21 so what i recommend is you guys start in a brand new server get all of the new beginner rewards and then transfer over here or migrate to norheim 21 or you could just you know if you want to skip those early game rewards you can start here and we can play together anyway let's jump into the guide guys if you're not familiar with the mysterium it's essentially a mini game that refreshes every two days here in infinity kingdom and the goal is to get through all four floors to get the maximum amount of rewards and you get rewards uh, throughout the entirety of the event so you don't have to complete it to get the rewards you just get them as you're going you also will be able to get some epic immortal fragments and uh, one of my favorite things about the mysterium is the mysterious shop which gives you um, uh, epic fragments at a discount yeah if you're a free to play or a low spender and you really 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 need fragments of a particular immortal you may get lucky and find them here at a discount which is nice now really quick okay this has to be said the jungle dilemma floors have some really good music i love this is such calming relaxing beautiful music with this scenery it's so beautiful i i love it i love it the music on this on this store on this stage this level so good okay sorry I, i'm a sucker for good game music okay I, I i can't what what can i say at the very beginning of a floor you have the opportunity to pick between two paths and you can see that the path behind you disappears so you're not able to backtrack and collect rewards uh after you've you know chosen your path you are locked in now the reason that i chose to go the bottom path and again you know you can see this whole map in advance so you can choose where you want to go the way that i decide if it's a since this is floor one i know that i can beat this floor i know that my immortals and my armies are strong enough um i know i'm gonna beat no matter which route i go so the way that i pick is i decide you know do i want this mysterious shop or do i want the mysterious shop down here now i'm currently working on peter the great and these are fragments that are valuable to me so because it, i'm gonna be able to complete this no matter what i picked the better mysterious shop that i know i'm gonna spend gems in however if you're a new player or you're free to play or you're not you don't you're you're new to the game so you don't have very powerful immortals yet um what i would recommend is actually just go through and see you know which route do you think has the easier immortals to defeat one thing to keep in mind is that uh, it will sort of give you an idea as to what element that uh, that guard is or or that tormentor so if the army that you're using right your primary army is a water march then you want to go the route that has maybe the most fire guards or the most fire tormentors right that's sort of just basic logic there now with my current choice uh i could either fight the guard or i can skip the guard and get free rewards and it may seem like a no-brainer right it may be obvious that i should get the rewards and move forward but the reason that it's actually a terrible idea on the first floor is because when you defeat a guard not only do you get gold which is better than from what i've seen the rewards you get on the first floor but you also will get a lost soul lost souls right here are basically just little buffs that you get that only apply within the mysterium and they are going to help you later down the line later down the line you're gonna have the opportunity to pick either a normal or a hard mode i always recommend the hard mode if you can complete it we'll talk a little bit more about that later but you want to stack up all of the lost souls earlier on so in this instance i'm gonna go ahead and fight the guard instead of get those free rewards because i know that it's gonna help me later down the line i'm gonna get free gold and uh, that's going to give me the opportunity of collecting more rewards later so you can see here that you have the opportunity of one time speed or two time speed and you also have the opportunity to control your immortals so right now i have auto battle turned on because i know that i'm going to win regardless uh, but one thing that i would recommend is that if you guys are struggling with the mysterium 
do not auto battle because auto battling for example if you're you know if the enemy has three percent health left and one of your immortals finishes charging up their ability it's going to use it because it's auto battling right but you don't need to use an absolutely massive nuke when the enemy only has three percent left it's a waste and you can actually save it because as you can see here my skill bar carries over to the next fight as you can see it's not reset to zero that's the orange bar here so you can save that skill shot uh, for the next guard that you fight and it's going to be way more impactful because they have a full army of troops so you can actually start the match with a bang which is really really good we'll talk a little bit more about that later now when you do get to choose a lost soul you'll have a few different options right and they come in different rarities so blue is rare uh, purple is elite and there's also the epic gold choice and a good rule of thumb is just pick whichever one is the highest rarity that's that's really a solid rule of thumb however you do have to keep in mind which immortals does it apply to so in this instance energy regeneration plus 10 percent just applies to all immortals no matter what doesn't matter and so for me that's the best choice but for this one it only applies to the front row and you got to be really careful because some of them will only apply to specific elements right so you may see that the only purple one that pops up will buff you know wind immortals by a ton which is not useful unless you're using wind immortals so like in that instance you're not going to pick the purple one because it's not going to help you at all so in this instance you can see that i can pick a spring of life or i can pick a chest the spring of life will resurrect a dead immortal or if you don't have any dead ones it'll just heal your weakest uh your lowest health immortal again in this instance i would rather have an immortal at full health than whatever is in this chest because again the, the chests aren't great and you're going to see that right here let's go ahead and grab a level a floor one chest right we have eighteen thousand iron and uh, what is this four minutes of dragon upgrade speed ups now in this instance we have a choice i can either pick this holy team here which is a tormentor and get more gold or i can fight uh this fire team that's going to give me less gold it'll be a little bit easier uh, again because it's floor one i'm going to actually opt for the harder one because i, I know i'm going to beat it uh and i i'm going to get more rewards and odds are that the lost soul that i'll get from this is going to be a little bit better so let's go ahead and just skip the battle because it's so early on and we're going to fight so many more guards i'm actually going to pick the 20 percent uh damage which is you know at the early you know early on it's terrible but later on it gets good uh this is trash if you get this on like fourth floor uh three for example um but we'll pick it because it's early and we're definitely going to use it next up we have a mirror and the mirror gives you the choice of picking an immortal that you can recruit uh now usually you know you're going to want to pick the one that matches your team because if you do for you know have a, a an immortal that dies then you're going to want to replace them with the same element so you can keep that element bonus and all that good stuff and then here we go this is the only exception to floor one that i make which is you know given the opportunity to fight someone i'm just not going to do it because uh getting the peter the great fragments is more valuable to me than whatever buffs and gold i'm going to get from that fight um again this really only applies to people who are willing to spend the gems here if you're not going to spend the gems here then it is what it is once you're done you can hit abandon you also uh, can just pick the shop and then not buy anything in abandon so if that's a good a little tip if you guys would ever want to uh just skip you know a fight you can pick the shop not buy anything and abandon and move forward now one thing i want to recommend is that you can see here this is the last guard or, or tormentor you're gonna fight before the final boss uh, and remember what i said before your energy will carry over to the next fight which means that if you've been auto battling up until this point i always recommend to not auto battle uh, this last fight before the boss because again the boss is hard you want to save as much energy as you can so you want to be as efficient with your skill uses as possible all right so first thing you want to do turn off the auto battle and I'm actually going to turn off the uh, two times speed here so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm going to do so I'm going to use this skill shot from Attila right off the rip I have no reason really not to um, I forgot how slow this is at one time speed that's crazy so we're going to use Attila we're going to use Ramses and we'll just kind of keep an eye on their health there we're also going to use uh, Yoshitsune as well um now what i'm gonna do here um this second skill for the dragon heals me so i'm actually gonna pop that before we end um and what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna freeze them here and i'm going to use merlin's skill now merlin's skill a little tip for you guys when they're frozen he deals more damage and it looks like we froze one i think the front row um and now we've got eight percent ten percent left there's no point in wasting the skills of these three immortals there's just no point now if i was auto battling it would have popped at least one or two of them in that small amount of time uh, so what i've done now is by playing this manually i've effectively saved those massive skill damage uh skills for the final boss let's go 
ahead and fight the mysterious mysterium judge this is another battle that i would say you shouldn't auto battle because again you want to optimize so i'm gonna go ahead and do the uh <clears throat> two times speed here and i'm just gonna pop all the skills from the first thing you'll see a massive chunk is dealt right away 24 uh, 26% right off the rip now we're gonna hit them with my dragon skill freeze them hopefully and we'll use Merlin to do a massive nuke and uh, we'll watch their health get destroyed and boom there it goes uh, now we can just pop the extra skills oh we get some free healing before we end we get we always get that free healing because the dragon skills don't carry over guys they don't so keep that in mind you know if you're waiting on your dragon skill always use the it, this really only applies to i think water and holy i don't know if any other dragons uh heal you as much as them but you definitely want to heal every single battle if you can okay let's go ahead and pop open this chest and the first stage we got peter the great baby let's go that is exactly what i'm talking about these are the free rewards that you get that is 300 gems worth of peter the great that you could get from market refreshes right 300 gems worth of fragments that i need that i will use that i just got for free all right so we're going to move on to the next floor here and i'm going to walk you guys through this a bit faster because i've already explained all of the basics one thing you will notice is that there are two portals at the end of floor two a regular portal and a hard mode portal now the strategy for floor two is the same as floor one you want to defeat as many of the guardians and tormentors as you can pick the routes with the best shot for you in this instance it's going to be the oh i guess it doesn't really matter for me i don't really need either of these shops and let's do our thing so let's see what we got baby let's go um we're gonna proceed through here we're not going to auto battle let's go ahead and use those skills and then uh, we're not gonna pop merlin just yet we're gonna wait for that first dragon skill to go off so let's go ahead and do that and then we're gonna pop merlin here let's go ahead and use it and boom and then let's use the other immortals as well he's only at 48 so let's go ahead and use yoshitsune and then we're going to heal up for free and then now i can pretty much auto battle because it doesn't really matter i'm going to make it through no matter what we're actually pretty low on health here i'm surprised um i guess maybe did i pick bad lost souls or did they make this harder since last time <laughs> no it should be fine we'll be good um let's move forward and uh collect our free rewards ladies and gentlemen and then uh, we're gonna move on to the hard path we always move on to the hard path so we get four fragments of king arthur that's great and then we're gonna go into the hard mode portal now here's the thing as you remember from last time we are low on health okay and we're presented with two uh, guards that counter water and one wind so we're gonna go with that now here you can see the path is a little bit different uh it's not the same we do have the opportunity of getting a shop and i don't really care about that shop either so not a big deal now because you fought pretty much every guard up until this point you have a nice little stack of these lost souls here so you've got some pretty nice buffs so now that we're on the hard mode floor and we're starting to fight uh some really tough guards you have two choices uh your first choice is to continue to to fight as many as you can while still being able to complete the floor or you can skip all the fights and just collect all the chests right because we've already gotten to the end uh we've gotten to the last regular stage there's Evernight uh, Labyrinth right after this, which is a little bit of a different beast in itself. So it's up to you guys. So I'm gonna skip this battle. Now let's take a look at this chest, okay? 73,000 stone and 15 minutes of speed ups. Significantly better than floor one, right? Significantly better. I really enjoy that. Here we're gonna go for the healing. Uh, we're not gonna get the free rewards because the healing is gonna help us, again, move forward, better, faster, stronger, all that stuff. We always love healing in this. So I'm just gonna avoid this fight and we're gonna collect the free uh, resources free speed ups uh here we get more free resources and speed ups so this is sort of where like because you collected all the lost souls early on you can sort of afford to skip some of the harder fights if you don't you know you do get the gold but again you have to you have to gauge you know is fighting them gonna make it harder for me to actually complete it um so here we're gonna go ahead and uh actually we're gonna go ahead and take the gold we're gonna take the gold even though they counter us even though they're really strong let's see how we do are we gonna survive and we're gonna do just fine boys we're gonna do just fine and as you can see here the the third floor because you're pretty well prepared you can just sort of go through and just collect all, all the rewards uh, i'm gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna grab this one as well so we're getting a ton of free resources ton of free speed ups reaping the rewards of playing smart in the early game that's how i see it if you guys have a better strategy for the mysterium you guys can let me know in the comments section below salad and another wind team we're fighting a lot of wind guys over here now this guy actually has more uh power than me but we've got a pretty nice health you remember what we were at when we started this floor right so let's go ahead and challenge him i shouldn't have auto battled that last guy 
I made that mistake, but that's okay. We still got, uh, oh, we've got some, our, our skills are in decent spots here. It could be better, but it could definitely be worse. All right, the floor three chest. Let's pop this open and we get eight Richard fragments. I actually just recently maxed Richard. So I'm going to get some free uh, soul gems for that, which is nice. We get a bunch of more gold, which is amazing. And uh, was that an hour and a half of speed ups? And then we can enter the Evernight Labyrinth portal. Now, the Evernight Labyrinth is in hard mode for me because I picked hard mode. Um, Evernight Labyrinth is a little bit of a different beast here. Okay. It's a different beast. You're going to pick two armies and they split up. These are my two strongest armies. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you have the opportunity here to get schematic fragments for a particular unit type. Okay. Now the one that I found is the easiest to get is the alchemical wonders. This is for the skill damage back row. This is like for Merlin, for example, you get some schematic fragments of Zill's notes. You only unlock that chest. If you can collect the correct amount of each color gem before you reach the portal here, the switches on both sides. So Evernight labyrinth is in three sort of portions and in each portion you have to collect those gems and you'll also get the opportunity to pick a different treasure. So essentially what you want to do is, you know, if you care about the schematics, you're going to want to collect all the gems that you can. And that means that uh, because you have to progress on both sides of the path here at the same time, uh, you, you have to pick your fights wisely. Not only is it just going to be which one's easier or which one do I counter? It's, you know, do I need this gem from this particular one? You know, is there, are there enough blue gems over here to not collect blue gems on this side, for example, right? Like this side only has two reds over here. We've got only two two reds as well. Um, and again, that's the reason why I think, uh, the Zill's notes is the easiest to get because it's evenly distributed amongst the three colors. That's just my experience. But what I usually do for the Evernight and Labyrinth, this is sort of my strategy and guys, your, your mortals get completely reset, uh, when you enter this mode. So keep that in mind. You don't have to worry about like, Oh, I'm on low health on the last floor. This is a whole separate portion. Okay. Um, what I like to do is with my weaker March, I like to start and fight what is beneficial to me. Okay. So in this instance, I'm going to pick the weaker March, uh, and I'm going to fight the Lancelot over here. So I know I'm going to win this. And the point of progressing with your, uh, weaker March first is that, you know, you're really going to be limited with your progress by your weakest March, right? Like you're only as strong as your weakest link. That is a, a famous phrase. If I'm saying that correctly, I don't actually know. Uh, but regardless, um, you know, you're gonna, you're not going to get that far with your weak March, right? So so you're going to want to fill in the gaps here uh, with your stronger March, right? So you don't want to progress with your stronger March and then realize, oh my God, I need a red gem to collect my treasure. And then you can't get the red gem because your weaker March dies, right? Like that's, that's tragic. So in this instance, <clears throat> I'm actually going to go ahead and we're going to skip because we need that healing. So I'm going to collect some free resources and this blue stacks is jumping around. Let's go ahead and grab the healing amulet. And then we have the opportunity to grab another blue one if we think we can win. So let's go ahead and do that. Why not? We'll see if we can take it. And that'll put a little bit of an ease on my other army. And my Peter the Great, unfortunately, does die there. So he gets taken out. Now, I can't move any farther here. We do have to grab that switch. And you can only progress when both armies get on both switches. So that means if your weak army dies, that's it. You're not progressing anymore. You can use a Heart of Norheim if you want. But it is very difficult to beat this. So just a forewarning. Now you can see <clears throat> I know exactly which colors I need to beat with my strong March and the odds of me beating them are higher because this is this is the highest probability of winning right these are my highest uh, power marches so we need two greens and a red uh, we can accomplish that by this green this red and this green so let's go ahead and do that um, so we'll take this green gem here we'll get that easy victory baby easy peasy lemon squeezy barely took any damage at all let's go ahead and grab this chest um, and then <clears throat> the next thing we need is the red so we'll get some free healing nice love that now uh, we'll be at max health we'll grab the red here from the earth immortal and uh the earth sorry the earth team <clears throat> easy victory there as well and then all we need is one more green gem so let's go ahead and grab this mysterium chest free stuff is always good get that stone I, I feel like I always run out of stone uh, and also we are we have a type advantage here so free green gem easy peasy lemon squeezy we fully unlocked the uh, the chest here so we get our schematic fragments which is nice now we can go ahead and grab the switch 
and we can do it all over again we got to do this two more times uh you can pick a new treasure so if you really want to get schematics for a particular immortal you're gonna you can see which one it's for right like you can click on it and you can see what exactly uh it is now one more thing to know is that the healing amulets you collect with your stronger march will heal your weaker march immortals and vice versa so you can keep an eye here on richard's health for example i'm gonna go ahead and grab this healing amulet with my army that isn't richard right richard is not in my water march and then you go over here and boom richard has more health it heals your entire armies like all your mortals right so obviously if they're dead they're dead but besides that everybody gets healed so that's a nice little tip you know if you guys are struggling with your weaker march you can progress a little bit with your stronger march to grab a healing amulet just so you can proceed farther with your weaker all right so here's another example of what the evernight labyrinth floor might actually look like on any given day you can see it's a bit more complicated over on the left side where you do have your strongest army now because you don't have any buffs from your lost souls the importance of these healing amulets cannot be overstated so here's another example of how you might actually go about using this healing amulet so if you're pushing forward with your weaker march first and you come across to this crossroads here and you'll see that my weaker march really lost a ton of health in that first battle you may be inclined to grab that healing amulet and i do think that is the correct way to go however again if you're pushing forward first with your weaker march like i do recommend you may notice that your stronger march is actually at the beginning of the evernight labyrinth and they haven't lost any health at all so when you go over here and you collect this healing amulet it's not going to do anything for the the stronger march that you're leaving back over here so what i would recommend in this instance is push a little bit with your stronger march so that way they take a little bit of damage you make a little bit of progress and you can heal it back with that healing amulet for example we're going to fight this fire army right here you're going to see that i'm going to lose a little bit of health and then i can actually come over here and i can grab the healing amulet so you're basically getting more value out of that single healing amulet than you would have if you had just grabbed it pushing forward with only your weaker march first okay so you can see here that i've reached the end of the pathway for my weaker march and in the top right corner i've fulfilled my blue gem requirement but i still need a red and two greens however if you look over here on what's left of the enemies i only have a single green uh gem enemy left so even if i go over there and defeat them there is no way for me to actually complete this uh this schematic fragment uh gem requirement so in this instance what do you do well don't get discouraged okay there is no way for you to actually complete this so one thing that i will say is that these schematics uh right now feel like a late game optimization if you come over here to the forge and you click on forge you'll see what we're working towards these are zills notes this is what we're trying to get schematic fragments for okay you'll see here that it randomly adds a primary attribute and it randomly adds a zero to two secondary attributes and then you'll see some special at attributes over here there's a chance to obtain a mysterious and ancient spell that sends terror to the enemy de increases spell damage dealt to the enemy by half a percent right so really you know this is it's good to have it's good to have these schematics uh, but when you take a look at some of the more important things for your immortals like the immortal skills the immortal skill levels the equipment that's on your immortals the equipment levels that you have uh, really the schematics are a late game micro optimization they are a small enhancement to your immortal you know otherwise really what you want to focus on is everything else here schematics later so with that being said if you can't get the schematic for this particular pathway don't worry too much you'll have another opportunity once you hit these switches to work towards another schematic so you will have the ability to attempt to get more but again you know it's more important that you're actually finishing the evernight labyrinth because the rewards at the very end are really what you're working towards as a free to play or a low spender or even somebody who Who's spending quite a bit in this game uh still getting some rare immortal fragments uh is really really good also you're gonna get schematic fragments as well just by completely finishing this guaranteed so don't worry too much if you can't complete it okay just focus on what is the best way to finish this portion of the pathway knowing that no matter what you do you can't finish this right so it's more important right now to make progress because there's not going to be any lost souls that you're going to get from fighting more enemies right if i take the left pathway here I still can't get that chest but I'm gonna have to fight more enemies than if I take the right pathway right so in both outcomes I'm not getting any buffs from fighting more enemies and I'm still not gonna get the schematic fragments so in this instance it only makes sense for me to completely ignore the requirements here because it's impossible to obtain and just fight the least amount of enemies possible to make it towards the end now I have an opportunity here to completely skip both fights however the reason that I'm gonna go for the healing amulet is because my weaker army 
is pretty significantly damaged and i don't think i'm going to take that much damage from this fire march here so i'm going to go ahead with my stronger army heal the weaker army and myself and then go ahead and fight this uh this fire army because again i don't really think i'm going to take that much damage and it's worth it to be able to heal the other march right this is basically where i was before i grabbed that healing amulet so essentially i got a free heal for my weaker march and you can see over here the health did go up substantially which is nice and so again even though i couldn't get the schematic fragment here i do think that i made the best possible decisions uh to finish Evernight Labyrinth, which is ultimately what you want to do. And now you can see here, I have the ability to choose again. Okay. Eventually your weak army is probably going to die. The Evernight Labyrinth is really unforgiving and it's really difficult, especially if you only have one strong March. So what do you do in the instance where your weaker March dies, right? Or even, you know, in this instance, I had very low health entering the battle. So everybody ended up dying, but even if you lose a key component of your army or two, so maybe if just, you know, my, uh, Peter, the great and my Isonge, maybe those two died. The other two survived regardless of that. I still would recommend, even if only two immortals die, that you switch the composition of your March entirely in order to proceed. Right? So even though I lost, I still did half damage pretty much to the entire uh, enemy here. And that does remain, even if you have to change your formation. So here's what I would do. And again, imagine only two of these immortals died, right? So in this instance, all of them did, but even even if two of them died, what I would do is go in here and just change the entire March, right? Because you're, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to replace two of your immortals with almost equally as strong, uh, immortals of the same element type, right? I don't have one or two other super powerful lightning immortals. So it's better that I actually completely change the composition to focus on a different troop type buff. As you can see here, uh, you know, everybody sort of knows this, but if you deploy three, four or five of the same unit, uh, same element, then you get really nice buffs. So you want to capitalize on that. And you may want to, again, change your composition, even if not all of them die. So in this instance, since because my entire army died, I'm going to switch it up to my backup water March. Um, I don't have a full army of backup water, but you can see here, I do have a pretty powerful front row and I do have Helen of Troy, which is a powerful back row. Now I don't have another powerful back row water immortal because all my other water immortals are in my strong March. So in that instance, what can you do? Well, you can always add some sort of shadow uh, immortal in that back to fill it out. Now, of course, shadow does not uh, help you with this four unit or five unit, uh, you know, deployment bonus. However, shadow does counter every element that you're going to encounter in the Evernight Labyrinth, except for Holy. Uh, so it does, even though it doesn't fulfill this requirement, it does fulfill the uh, type advantage requirement, which is really, really good. Also, you know, an immortal like Medby is really nice, sort of fits in there anywhere. Other immortals that you can pick to fill in that back row would be somebody that is pretty supportive. So for example, we could pick uh, somebody like Zenobia, for example, she is a very supportive uh, immortal with her primary skill, restoring HP to two of your units with the highest number of troop losses and the two units will regain HP for uh, every six seconds with every successful hit of a normal attack. So it doesn't matter what element your other immortals are. This is just going to be a generic healing immortal for everybody in your party. So again, it doesn't fulfill that requirement because you probably can't. So you might as well pick the next best uh, thing. The other thing that you could do is pick somebody like uh, Empress Wu, right? So she is a very difficult immortal to get. I do admit that, right? But she just sort of dominates no matter what immortal uh, a composition you have she just deals so much damage that it's it's worth having her in there so if you do have empress Wu at a decent level you could throw her in there as well for this particular fight what i'm going to do is throw in med b because she has a very she's got a maxed out first skill and again it will counter pretty much anything you fight now in this instance what do you pick for the dragon right because you can't pick your water dragon uh, presumably that would be in your stronger march so you would have to pick some other dragon now um, because this is primarily water you're not gonna be able to fill to fulfill the four or five elements requirement so my recommendation is most likely you're going to want to just pick your second highest level dragon some other good choices are the fire dragon is just generically very powerful uh the the earth dragon while i find is sort of on the weaker end it is a bit more defensive which is what you might want in a weaker march because you want to keep what you have alive so that's nice um uh, also i'm using the lightning dragon because the lightning dragon i think is really powerful my second best dragon so i'm just 
going to leave him there and then we're going to proceed you're going to see here that they keep all the damage we've dealt and we can sort of skip that battle and know that we're going to claim victory we did actually really well there which is awesome you're going to see we get some schematic fragments just for progressing as well so that's really good stuff let's go ahead and keep going now again before fighting this last enemy i've made a little bit of progress with my stronger march so that way i can grab this healing amulet so again the healing amulets are very strategic you want to make the best use out of them possible and now i have a much higher probability of winning here so let's go ahead and do that we've succeeded with our weaker march we've pretty much lost everything uh but regardless that's okay we can still proceed to the final boss which is what we want now when you get to the judge of this floor it's going to automatically pre-select your strongest march uh remaining which is really nice again you don't want to skip this fight you do want to fight this manually so you can control and use your skills at the optimal times and then we pull out the victory baby we lost we almost lost everything but you'll see here we get 35,000 gold which is awesome we get some really nice schematics here and since we finished the Evernight labyrinth we can collect the ultimate reward chest let's go ahead and open that up and we get some purple schematic fragments which is really really nice if you want you can go down in the bottom left corner and you can see everything that you've obtained from completing the Evernight labyrinth and from just completing in general the entirety of the mysterium this is incredibly good rewards you guys you definitely want to do this every single time that this comes around i mean that's a ton of gold a bunch of resources here which is nice we get tons of speed ups for free you guys free speed ups really really good stuff and the best part is like lightning immortals are what I've been focusing on lately so I'm getting fragments for immortals that I actually want and use it's not just some random you know rare or elite immortals like no these are epic immortal fragments you can't pass this up anyway guys this video has been much longer than I intended it to be hopefully you guys found these tips and this guide useful for the mysterium again you get a ton of great rewards and a lot of really nice fragments and especially some schematic fragments later as well in the in the Evernight labyrinth so make sure you're doing it every other day and again i actually find it really fun the music is beautiful it's relaxing it's a nice little game mode you have to think a little bit about some strategy uh they did a really great job with this game mode and i'm looking forward to see with what they do next if they do add more that would be really really cool drop a thumbs up on the video if it did help you guys out it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other infinity kingdom players might actually see it comment down below if you have any other questions or strategies for the mysterium I would love to hear from you guys. Also, in the description, not only are my social media links, so my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, all that stuff is down there, but also, again, a link to download Infinity Kingdom. If you guys haven't already and you watch this whole video, what you what are you waiting for? The music's great, the graphics are great, the gameplay is fun. Just go ahead and download it, give it a try. I'm really enjoying it. And hey, maybe I will see you on the battlefield. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.